Hello, what's up? This is Nick, the commander in chief over at zappycode.com. And if you're watching this, you have found the Zappy Code open source project. Uh, if you ever want to find it again, you go to zappycode.com, uh, you click on code, and this will take you to our GitHub page where uh, you can see all the source code for our website. So it is written in Django, which is a Python framework, and I'm just going to walk you through getting it uh, up and ready on your computer. Uh, I'm running on a Mac, uh, but most of this is going to be uh, similar for Windows. Um, but let's go ahead and just walk through this. So in order to sort of run Zappy code locally on your own computer, you need to make sure that you have Python installed. So you can go to python.org uh, and make sure that you've got that. But assuming that's the case, then we are going to use Git to download this to our computer. Now you can just, you know, click here and say download zip unzip the file and have that there. Or if you want to go the cool style here, we can copy this here and we will open up a terminal. I'm going to move over to my desktop here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to do a git clone and then I'm going to paste in that URL that I copied. So it's just the URL with a dot git at the end. And uh, doing that is going to throw a it on my desktop, this folder called Zappy Code Django. Now, in my opinion, the best way to get this running is to set up a little virtual environment, and that is built into Python 3. So on my Mac here, I'm going to be using Python 3 on Windows. Usually you don't have to add the 3 here. You're just typing Python, gets it up and running for you. But I'm going to do Python 3-m venv, and I'm going to now create a virtual environment that I'm going to use for Zappy code. So I'm going to call this maybe just uh, Zappy VENV. Okay, so I remember this is my virtual environment that I made for Zappy code. So now that I've done that, on my desktop I have the Django project, and then I also have the Zappy code virtual environment. Now, I'm kind of going through all these steps quickly. If you have any questions about like working with Git, Django, uh, the rest of it, virtual environments, you can find that on our website, Zappy Code. Go to our courses. I personally, if you're going to be wanting to learn Django, check out the Django 3 course. This goes through all these things in details. Again, I'm going quickly because I'm assuming you have some background. If you don't, please take this course. It'll get you up to speed, and then you can be running this on your own computer. Okay, so with that, back to what we have here, right? We have the virtual environment, and we have the folder. So let's get into the virtual environment. So I'm going to do source space zappy venv bin and then activate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter there. And now these little parentheses signify I'm inside of this virtual environment now. So with this, I'm going to move into that zappy code folder. So I'm going to say cd zappy code dash django. Okay. And now that I'm in here, what I need to do is install all the different pip packages uh, that we need. And so there is a requirements.txt, which has all that information inside of it. Uh, just a quick look at that. It's just saying these are the different things and at what particular version. So I'm going to just type out then that I want to do uh, python-m pip install. And I want to install dash r and then requirements.txt. So unfortunately, this got chopped onto two lines. Let's see if I can make it one here for you. There we go. So the pip install dash r requirements.txt. Okay, so this is going to go through and do all this work of downloading all these different pieces, getting it up and running for you. So included in here is Django and all the different uh, pieces that you'll need. So we'll go ahead and give this a second. I'll do a little dancing. Pip, pip, pip. And this is where things blow up, huh? Do not have the latest pip version. Okay, so let's do this. Pip install upgrade pip. See if this does it for us. Okay, I'm gonna re, if you hit the up key, you can get to previous commands. Let's try this pip install one more time. It, it wouldn't be a tutorial if something went wrong. You know what I'm saying? It, it can't just go smoothly all the time. Okay, let's see what we got here. 
Come on, you can do it. There we go. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, technically we can start running the server. If I do a python manage.py run server, uh, it will get up and running, but you can see we don't have the migrations in place. So let's go, do, go ahead and do a control C to stop that. And let's do a python manage.py migrate. Okay, so that gets your database up ready to all the different models that we have and all the changes we've made over time. You can see we've made a lot of changes and I'm sure by the time you're watching this, there'll be even more. Uh, but once we have that in place, uh, the next thing that we need to do is uh, I've provided some sort of default data to help you get up and running. Um, and so if we look inside of the project, let's go ahead and open this up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay inside of the starter pack here there's this file called data.json and it just provides some uh, default things to get you up and running like the big thing in here there's some example courses because right now if we go back to our terminal here and we do the python manage.py run server uh, you can open up your browser and go to local host 8000 okay uh, and here it is. This is Zappy code running locally on your computer, but you go to courses, for example, and uh, you're going to get nothing, right? There's no sort of test data to work with. And so uh, for this, what we want to do is we want to say python manage.py load data. Okay, and we want to get that from the starter pack slash data.json. So I'm going to go ahead and enter on that. And just by doing that, if I go back and run my server uh, and we reload here, it's going to show some courses. You're going to see it's not perfect yet, but at least it's like, oh, look, there's some courses. Now, there's no images here. And the way that we fix this is inside of the starter pack, we're going to take this media folder and drop it out to the top level. OK, so make sure it's now within the midst of like it's, you know, right next to money and NPM invites all that stuff there. And if you've done that, let's do a control C to stop the server and then start it up one more time. And we go to our browser, let's reload that page. And we should see ah, some nice images showing up. Okay, so there you have it. This is how to get Zappy code up and running on your own computer. Now, again, there's not stuff uh, everywhere. Uh, like you can see, this is saying that there's no members, so you have to kind of go into the admin and create your own uh, users and stuff. Uh, remember, if you want to uh, make your own admin user, you can go uh, python manage.py, create super user, and this will walk you through the process of making a user that then you can take and go to your localhost slash admin and then uh, log in and do a lot of stuff. Now, this isn't working because I stopped the server here, um, but that's how you do it. So uh, Zappy code is open source. If you ever have something that you think, hey, I'd like to, you know, to change this on the website, I think it'd be better like this, or I found a bug, I'd like to, you know, do a fix. Uh, you can uh, submit your changes via a pull request. Now, how to submit a pull request, that's a completely other discussion. You can find some great videos on that, but hopefully, this has helped you to get Zappy code up and running. And again, if you need help with any of this, if you're like, how does Django work, Python, virtual environments, all this, please come take a course from Zappy code. This is why we're here to teach you this stuff. So uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope you that feels cool having Zappy code running on your own little local computer. All the best to you.